Good afternoon, everyone. Hong Kong money changers run out of money. People are terrified that that peg of the U.S. dollar is going to come unwound. ATMs running out of money. If you thought you could sit back and have everything delivered at home, Amazon. Turning back drivers too dangerous. Seed apocalypse. The seed shortage is beginning. China buying U.S. soybeans despite the government says don't buy soybeans. In a swarm of mutant ticks, 428 times more ticks than normal in Russia. These are the fingerprints of the grand solar minimum. Bank of America is predicting gold to nearly double to above $3,000 per ounce. And gold is often the most sought after investment hedge to protect wealth during times of economic uncertainty. With never ending printing by the Fed, we're fighting an uphill inflationary battle. With this much inflation on the way, only one investment stands out, gold. Patriot Gold Group has no fee-for-life IRAs where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold or silver. At Patriot, you work directly with an owner and avoid paying absurd broker fees. Call today or request a free investment kit. PatriotGoldGroup.com. The link's in the description box below. And during this grand solar minimum, beyond the impact of volcanoes, earthquakes, decreasing crop yields, there's a human element to this as well with population movements, economic disarray. And it seems that so many global events are reflecting what happens every single grand solar minimum. And that's what this channel is all about. Over here into Hong Kong, the dollar is out of stock, meaning so many people are trying to change out of Hong Kong dollar into U.S. dollars that they've run out of money. The money changers, and you might say, well, there's only a few thousand of those in Hong Kong. But it's much more than that. People are really worried about the 7.1 to a U.S. dollar peg sliding free as China comes in with its new national security laws. And if it does unpeg, it'll probably go to 70 to 1. And that means you lost 90% of your value. And in a panic situation, you're going to see the same thing. After the first best available options finished, well, what's the number two option and the number three option? At the money change game in Hong Kong, it's British pounds and euros, but preferential first choice is a dollar. And you'll see this with foods, precious metals, and everything in between as you look around the planet and things change so quickly. And then you say, no, 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 I'll just go to an ATM where I can change in foreign exchange. Yeah, you and thousands and tens of thousands of others as well, where the bank machines had run out to the point where the banks couldn't even refill them. They were running out so quickly. The second line there, HSBC said they were working to replenish the machines. There were lines stretching hundreds of feet waiting for people. It was a nonstop replenishment where the banks were calling in more money because they were running out and didn't want to appear weak that there was a bank run going on. That's indeed how much replenishment was going on. I'm digging into this story more now that there's more images and stories coming out about the event. But Hong Kong GDP was already crushed back to 2009, great financial crisis levels and even lower. And as we really get into the tumultuous numbers coming out through quarter two here, I bet that's going to go lower. And an unusual headline, also China buying U.S. soybeans despite ordered not to buy the soybeans. Now, you in China do not do the opposite of what you're told to do by the government as a large company or consortium of importers. They say don't buy, you don't buy. That's the end of it. No more discussion. Yet, we see Chinese firms buying at least three cargoes of U.S. soybeans, even as leadership in the CCP said, do not buy it. But they did take advantage of good pricing when there's more of a glut on the market rate at harvest season, October, November. And I think I may have found the reason Brazil sees sluggish corn exports amid the labor shortages there. Well, this would taper straight into soybeans as well. So again, China, they lost their first primary spot that they would choose to buy from. Yet they only have a second and third choice. So, well, they're going to have to eat their pride and come back and get their food from somewhere. The U.S. would be the best choice as a second or third option. You see how this is working? 
Now take it into your own life. Where's your second or third option going to come from when your first option runs out? And if your option for foraging for food is in this forest where they put up tick alerts because of 400 times the normal amount of ticks, well, you might have to go to a second option. You know, this can be on so many levels of our lives here, even from going out to get some nice nettles or whatever it might be for your food source. Mutant ticks invade Russia. 428 times more ticks than usual. What is the catalyst here for such an enormous amount of ticks? I've been looking back in historical record and trying to find out other tick infestations across Europe during the Little Ice Age, see if we can match something up on this. Research ongoing. Now put it into context, there's 214 ticks per square kilometer. That's an enormous amount. That means every time you go into the forest, you're going to get a couple on you. Especially if you're walking in multiple pairs of, you know, four, six, eight people. Oh, you're, somebody's getting ticks coming back for sure. So to do the math, to make it match up on the square kilometers, you need two square kilometers of land mass where there's usually one tick at this time of the year. Right now you'd have 418 ticks in that same two square kilometers. Pinpoint on the map, Krasnoyarsk. And fun fact, one of the oldest cities in Russia. So when I was doing an image search, I thought, Tartaria. I was wondering if there was any global liquefaction, otherwise known as a mud flood there. Not too many old photos from that area, though, but it does give you a glimpse of the most beautiful architecture. There's quite a few stunning buildings across the landscape there. And trueleafmarket.com is sending out a notice, the great seed apocalypse. So if you see this come into your inbox or you hear about it, I'd like to explain it to you in a little bit of detail. They've definitely had some availability issues in certain types of seeds. Not all seeds by any means, all seeds, but we're starting to see the rumblings and beginnings of a seed shortage globally here, stretching into 2021. And they also make it very clear that it's not just their company that's having trouble getting these same species of seeds, but every company that does sell seeds in the U.S. is a supplier. So they have a list of seeds that they're experiencing shortages with right now, such as the Detroit dark red beet seeds. Now, even though they don't have that variety, they do have other varieties of beet seeds that are available. And also the Cherokee purple tomato, can't get that, no seeds available, but they do have other varieties of tomatoes for now. They're also talking about the vast gargantuan, amazing orders. They sold more seeds now in the beginning of the year than they have usually for an entire year as people wanting to get their own gardens and grow their own food up during these tumultuous times. People are realizing, bring your family out, grow food. And those of you who eat microgreens or grow them, the black oil sunflower seeds not inbound. See, they have this growing in a different country. Growers grow specifically non-GMO heirloom seeds for True Leaf Market. Their entire crop is dedicated to sell as a seed stock to True Leaf Market. But because the main amount of their growers for this are in northern Italy, there's so many problems with labor shortages, exports, lockdowns, and the list goes on there. So again, it's all about the breakdown in supply chains, and it comes back to it. What's your best second or third option? And right over to Amazon. We've been fortunate enough to be able to order things online, have them delivered to our homes. But this now is going to be delayed for at least a few more weeks as Amazon orders delivery drivers to turn back. It is too dangerous to deliver. Now with that, you would say, all right, well, it's just the trucks. But no, even at the warehouses and fulfillment centers, they're also pairing back operations to assure safety for the team. So you're definitely going to be looking at a delay. And then by the time it ramps back up again, however long the scenes on the streets persist, anywhere from weeks to months, as we come back into lockdown 2.0, is there a second option for Amazon delivery? Like some things, when you go down to the second and third option, there are none. So welcome to the world. This is the new grand solar minimum normal. And as I mentioned, trueleafmarket.com, heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on the planet. They still have an enormous amount of seeds, but you can see the first, I guess, tricklings of inavailability in the seed market as well. We saw this with foods first, meats, all types of things, but now it seems to be extending into the seed supply stock globally. So get what you can now. The link's in the description box below. It's a great way to support the channel. Microgreens, maybe you like to grow herbs. You can do that indoors, maybe on a windowsill. 
You can practice growing a little bit. And if you're into juicing, they even have wheatgrass kits and other types of kits that'll help you get your morning started. And along with the link to trueleafmarket.com, all of tonight's stories and images are in the same description box below the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.